Every business will need to calculate its value at some point or another. The circumstances in which company appraisals are performed can be very different from one appraisal to another. Here are a few examples. Company acquisition or disposal, search for partners, merger, demerger, liquidation. Succession and division between heirs, family transfer, tax assessment, estimation of shares or membership shares. In addition to noting the diversity of valuation contexts, we also need to understand the different risks and challenges related to these contexts. In the case of a business acquisition or disposal, for example, the objective is to determine a company value acceptable to all parties so that the transaction to go ahead. We need to find the fair price that satisfies both the seller and the buyer. In a business succession or a family transfer, however, the tax challenges are of primary importance and the appraiser will try to obtain the lowest possible minimum value to limit the financial impact of the disposal on estate taxes. The tax challenge is also vital if we are appraising assets in order to determine the amount of wealth tax payable. On the other hand, when we are appraising the amount of shareholders' funds and focusing on the company's financial return, the objective will clearly be to maximise the suggested value. Who is involved in the appraisal? There are in fact many potential stakeholders in the appraisal process. The purchasers, the owners, the seller, management, employees, works council, partners and shareholders, advisors, notaries, lawyers, accountants, bankers, equity providers, heirs and donors, and the tax authority. We have seen that the valuation objectives vary according to the circumstances, but we also note that in any given situation, the various actors may sometimes have conflicting interests. These conflicting interests are very clearly seen in disposals and acquisitions, for example. The owner aims to obtain the best valuation of his or her years of personal investment in order to pursue new wealth objectives. The buyer, on the other hand, has limited investment resources and will try to fix a lower value. So remember, the economic and tax risks of the valuation differ depending on the circumstances and the actors concerned. The approach retained should be adapted to the relevant objectives, in other words, to the interests of the parties involved. There are several methods for appraising a company not just one single valuation approach. Each approach has its own particular view of the company, more or less well suited depending on its size. VSE trader, craft industry, professionals, SME or listed companies. Its industry sector, e.g. manufacturing, new technologies, services or trading. Its financial position, its profitability, its growth potential, and the degree to which the seller drives company performance. For example, the so-called asset-based approaches focus on the value of the company's operating assets. These approaches are best suited to the capital-intensive manufacturing sector, where the quality of the production equipment is paramount. On the other hand, valuing an e-commerce retailer for example, will require an approach that is more focused on short-term profitability criteria, so-called profit-based methods. In terms of the size factor, valuation methods need to distinguish between businesses with more or fewer than nine employees. For a SME, VSE, there is always a very strong connection between the owner and his or her business and forecasting is difficult, requiring the use of modified methods. This sentence is in the wrong order. Rearrange it correctly using all of the words. Remember, there is no single value. Instead, we use a scatter plot of values to obtain a company's price. 
By clicking on the words, circle the real so-called expert methods. Then click on Answer when you have finished.